Howdy, AP Precal. It's Ms. Kash. We are continuing with the exponential and logarithmic equations and inequalities. So this is video number two. Um, and the notes had a whole lot of problems, and I picked the ones that I wanted to do. So now we're on to um, example seven. So go back and watch the first video. I think I made it up to this point um, here. Okay, so this one, it tells you to solve the following equation without a calculator. Um, so when I see 8 and I see 2, I know they're both powers of, um, of 2. So this is 2 cubed raised to the 3x minus 2, and this is 2 to the x plus 5. When the bases are the same, we can set the exponents equal. This is a power to a power you multiply. So this becomes 9x minus 6 is equal to x plus 5. Add the 6, that's 11. Subtract the x, that's 8x equals 11. So x would equal 11 over 8. Okay, the next one, similar, all four of these are kind of similar, but on this one, I see the negative, um, excuse me, I see one half, which is two to the negative one, to the five x plus seven, and then I see four, which is two squared, so two to the two x is how that simplifies. So I get a negative five x minus seven equals two x. I can add this over here, I get seven x is equal to negative seven, therefore x would equal negative one. Okay, so now we are getting into inverse functions, um, and um, I think example eight starts with exponential, and it's going to ask us to get the inverse, which is a log. Then number nine gives us an, a log, which, and asks for the inverse, which is going to be exponential. Okay, so um, to find the inverse, we well, you know, before I start this one, let's see, my domain for any exponential function is all real. And my range, well, what's going to happen? Um, it normally has an asymptote at y equals 0, but now we've shifted that down to negative 15. So our range is going to go, and we've had no reflections, um, and our range is going to go from negative 15 to infinity. So that means that my new equation, my, um, my domain should go from negative 15 to infinity, and my range should be um, infinite, negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, so I'm going to come along and switch my x and my y's. I'm going to add 15 and divide by 3 equals 2 to the y plus 4. There's different ways to think about this. Am I in focus? I am not in focus. Well, sorry, we have two and a half minutes out of focus, but I'm too busy to go back and fix that. My apologies. There's the original problems if you can't see them. Um, sorry, in a perfect world, but it's not a perfect world. Okay, um, on this one, so one way to do it, you could take the log of both sides. That's one way to think about it. The other way to think about it is that this is currently in exponential form. Here's the base, there's the exponent, and it's equal to this. And I can go from exponential form to, to logarithmic form by saying log, here's the base, 2 of what? Well, of x plus 15 over 3 is equal to y plus 4. And I can double check by doing i heart logs. 2 to the y plus 4 equals that. Was that what we had? It sure was, okay? Um, <clears throat> so now the only thing I need to do, let's write it as in function notation. We have log base 2. If you would like, you could factor out that as a 1 -third and then x plus 15, or you could leave it this way, or you've got choice. You could put another set of parentheses, but you don't have to. And then we're going to subtract away that 4. Okay, so now um, I, had, I promised that we would talk domain and range. Notice on this one, a shift up and down doesn't change your range because your range is going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. A, um, a horizontal compression pulls you away from the y-axis, but we had an asymptote at the um, y-axis until we shifted it. So that doesn't do anything, but this will do something to our domain. So our domain is going to be from negative 15 to infinity, and our range is all reals. Super. Okay, the next one, they want us, so here, they want us to find the inverse, and now we're starting as a log. Um, G itself has a domain of, well, we can't, this is going to shift our graph to the um, right 4. So we're going to go from 4 to infinity, and our range is negative infinity to positive infinity. I know this wasn't in the question they asked, but we're fine. Um, okay, so now let's see, x is equal to negative 3 log base 5 of y minus 4 plus 6. I'm going to subtract 6 divided by negative 3. So x minus 6 over a negative 3 is equal to 
log base five of y minus four. And so now it's I heart logs. I'm having fun with the purple. So it's five to the this equals this. So five to the negative one third times x minus six. Can you tell that's a three? We'll pretend. Is equal to y minus four. So then our final answer becomes g to the negative one of x is equal to five to the negative one third x minus six plus four. Now, now be careful with handwriting. Things belong in the right place. All of that's in the exponent. That fraction um, is a little more clear when you write the, the, the line parallel to the bottom um, as opposed to slanted. Um, and then this is on that same level. So I'm not grading your handwriting, but I'm grading your handwriting. Um, okay, so what's the domain of this guy? The domain of this guy, it would have been, um, well, the domain is, of, of an exponential is all real. The range, that's what I meant, would have been from zero up to infinity, but now we've moved it up four, so we're four to infinity, and sure enough, they correspond, so that's good. Okay, let me look. We have, um, okay, I think I'll do one more in this video. I'll do number 10 in this video, and then the last three I'll do in the, in the third video. Okay, so on this one here, they're telling us h is equal to this exponential function and k is the inverse. Okay, so what value does k of x equal y? So the way that I thought through this is that k of x is equal to h to the negative 1 of x. Sorry, I forgot to write the word negative 1. Um, and those are both equal to y. So what's happening here is that this is the y value in the inverse function, which means we're looking for the x value in the original function. So this is telling us, this implies that we want h of 1, not h to the negative 1 of 1. But so, let me say it one more time. The y value in the inverse is equivalent to the x value in the original. So now I'm going to come back to this original function and plug in 1 for x. Uh, right, did I see that correctly? Okay, so then this becomes 3 squared is 9 minus 2, and this is equal to 7. So for what x value for k? So we could say k of 7 equals 1 might be a way to finalize those notes. Um, and we're about at seven and a half minutes, which is about what I do for a video. So come back and find exam the, the third video. I think it's going to be a little tougher. These got to be a little tricky when I was working them. So, all right. See you in a bit.